Check out the cameo. I think we got some roof issues on this one. See all the rippling down there. So one of the first things we do when we get in the shop, we protect everything for you. Protect, 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 protect everything. So, so this, as you can see this up underneath here. I'll, I'll cut some of this for you in a minute. But what this is, see the transition of the roof coming up, then it levels off. Then it goes down. That's not so severe as the one that's beside us. It one to drop down quite a bit. But what these are, they had to cut the roofing. See, what we did over here is we welded it right there. We rolled the roofing and welded it. That's what that is. So, but they didn't do that here because they don't know how. And you can see all this under here is already loose. This is this whole thing's gonna come off. We're gonna rip everything up, even the decking is coming off on this. But I like to go around and show what to look for. If you said, Hey, I want to buy this camper, okay. Well, first thing you're gonna be looking for, you can see this line right here. That's an indicator that roof is getting stressed out and something is popping underneath it. So that's one. I'd check all around here, make sure the caulking is well, but typically it isn't. And especially if it looks like it's slobbered and slobbered and slobbered on there, there's probably an issue in that in that area. So you got another plumbing right there. We go around, you know, again, you go around everything, but see how much buildup there is of caulking on this? You can get water all trapped up inside these little these little cavities. So when the sunlight comes out and the sunlight hits it, that little bit of moisture and water that's on there turns into a magnifying glass and then it starts really causing other issues like rod or or premature failure on like if it was a membrane that had a puddle that was sitting there for longer than like two days I call that ponding water on the commercial end they do if it's here for more than two days it's got to go it's got to be fixed um, it can't be there for more than two days that's how most warranties read but it looks like somebody tried to put some silicone on here that's what that is see this is why I don't like silicone look see peels right off that's silicone right there and you look at it and you go, hey, that looks sealed. Look at this. I'm doing nice and easy. Don't use silicone. Don't use silicone. Looks like you got it all down here, too. Watch this. Look at there. Voila. And if you were to look at that, you go, wow, that looks really sealed really well. It does look pretty tight. But it's not. That's why I hate silicone. It's deceptive. It is deceptive. Okay, some more issues up here. Looks like someone put some tape on it. On this side, that's some of the, that's the, the uh, radius right there on that side, right here. But again, you can see all this rippling and wrinkling here. Well, let's see what we got underneath there. On this side, got to switch hands, get my box cutter, or in this case, roof cutter. Look at there, <laughs> oh, that's what it was. And I like to see stuff like this. <laughs> right. Let me slice down again on here. It doesn't even meet the shoulder. It's a gap, and they didn't put any protection on it at all. This is a fleece back. That's what this is. We tear this roof off. All this fleece is going to stick to the roof still. There'll still be some on there. So it's going to be inevitable. We'll have to redeck it one way or another on that type. So, but they wanted to have it tore up anyways. And because um, it is OSB up underneath there, and we're going to put some plywood down instead. So, yeah, that's what that big gap is. This is a TPO roof. This is, is a, it's not the same as what we use. This is a fleece back TPO and it's just real thin. Let's see here. You can see how, I mean, this is super thin. You couldn't weld to this. You'd burn it before it would, it would work. So that's same shoulder problem right there as I showed you over on this side. Same thing. And it's on the opposite side as well. Looks like we got a screw or something coming up right there somewhere. Got some good screw cap cover. I like this cover better than the other insert stuff. So 
some wrinkles here. You can see the whole roof is just distressed out down here. And uh, move some of that stuff. That's a trim cover we use. I actually had a special order of that. You can't get that in black. Like they don't make it. Not unless you say, I would like to have two miles of it. Then they make it. Let's see, we got some rot right under here. And this is pretty common. You know, we see a lot of them that rot here. Well, they'll rot around the ladders. Look around the ladders right in there. You can see so the water is going to trickle down right in here. That's where the water goes. I'll get right down inside that little crack right there and it'll get up underneath the plate. So what that is right there is the same plate as right here. So it'll get down and it gets into this right here. And then once it gets in there, then it gets behind all those screws. That's typically how they start to rot. Now, you can see we got the same rippling on this side. And then if you have one of these antennas and you like them and you're a fan of them, see there's a leak right there. So the water will come down right here, right through this. It'll trickle down. It'll go down inside there. And then it'll go into the coach and it'll rot it out. So if you have that, just make sure you've got enough slack on the cord here, the, uh, the coax. And then load that not silicone put it down you can buy any other product besides silicone you go to home depot or lowe's Lexel is there there's a lot of other stuff there's uh, osi makes a urethane type product um, you can use it as well and uh, at least in this application a lot of applications but you got to make sure everything's compatible with what you need but those are some of the stuff you can find locally and then uh, you got to make sure that if it's a water-based or if it's a solvent-based, if you put a water-based product on here because you know it's going to rain in an hour, well, it's going to wash out. So I would uh, definitely recommend reading that. Okay, so this is a lid that they had uh, in here. There was a lid mark, shall I say. There's a lid right there. So they obviously have it all boogered on here. Check all of this. That's what the RV industry wants you to do. They go, oh, it looks compromised. Put some more on. Put more on, more on, more on. They want to do that every three or four months. And the only ones that are putting more on is a moron. There's something wrong with that. Would you go around and cock the windows around your house every three or four months? Of course not. Go put air in your tires every three or four months because they go dead flat? No. Uh, that's the RV industry's way of staying in your pocket. And it also shakes them a liability. Because then when you come back and go, hey, I got, what, did you do that every three or four months? Ah, oh, gee whiz, we're sorry, we can't warranty that for you. They'll say, hey, I got a 10-year or 12-year material, you know, warranty. Well, it's a material warranty, right? The material itself, right here, this. This didn't fail. That failed. That's how they get you. Same thing here. This is the same as the other side. Hey. That's a breach in there. But if I were to look at this, obviously, hopefully, right off the rip, you'd know we got roof problems. You're gonna need to put a roof on it. So, get some more protection right down here. And there's the same side on the same shoulder. Uh, put some tape on here. And that's where they would want you to put more on. See, that's all cracked. They'd want you to put more on. This is just a butyl. That's all it is. It's a fancy butyl putty, and it dries out the sun dries it out you don't use it like in this application but they have brainwashed everybody or maybe that's a bad word misled everybody to think this is just the best stuff on the market that's what you, if it's if it, i'll tell you straight up though if you read a label and it says rv on it rv cock rv don't buy it <laughs> just don't buy it because it's usually overpriced and it's cheap so but uh all right, I'm going to go see who that is calling us, and uh, we will uh, get back with you on this cameo. That's what it is. So, awesome. So, like I said, all this is going to come up. New decking and everything. I think we're going to run a camera. 
and then I got a new antenna going on here. There's a lot happening to this one. Quiet, quiet on the set. We're in production. This is the roof deck coming up, as you can see. It's not going down, it's coming up. Aluminum trusses. Most of the insulation, I see, looks pretty well. I don't know what it'll look like down there. But, uh, so this looks pretty well. So that's what we're doing now, taking this up. Kind of give you an idea. This is what the customer wanted to redeck this. So just redeck it all up. They put drilled some holes for these two buys. And those are okay, they're not compromised or anything. So that's some of the things we look for when they come in. I want to make sure on some of the shoulders, on other models, they'll put these ferrules in there, the metal ferrules, and they're real sharp. And they don't protect the wire from the ferrule. The ferrule is just like a piece of tubing. And what it does is protects so you don't put a wire or something through it. So that's what we want to just look for, make sure these are, these are okay, they're not compromised. You know, they're not chafed or anything like that. So that's, what, that's what we'd be looking for while well, we already have it open, right? So, and then once we get all this off of here, we're going to redeck it with some plywood. We're not going to use OSB. And, um, you know, obviously all the screws will clean it all up. But it'll get glued down. So, but that's what we're looking for right now. Let's see what it looks like over here. Like I said, we haven't gotten to this point yet. So, this is pretty common. Looks like a lot of this uh, failed down there, as you can see. It fell down there probably because of the sealant on the edge here wasn't well and then what it'll do is some of the water will wick back some of it may drool down into the wall too so what we do is to kind of determine how bad it is when we pull this up we're going to see if we got any damaged insulation in there and if we do obviously it gets replaced before that even happens we make sure it's all dry and this is actually real fluffy and dry so this took the brunt of it which is good we got it just in time so that's a plus. So most of these are already on this side look pretty free. So all right. Then you can see what this is, a piece of foam. We put that in there so the debris doesn't fall back in. That's just some of the stuff that we do. We want to take care of your coach. So we wrap up all the awnings, wrap up drape this over the door so we don't get anything on the screen and then you can see we got some pads so when we walk in there we don't bring debris in there either so everything's all protected in there then uh, we'll be putting a strip over this right here we'll be putting a, a protective strip especially but you can see whoever the mastermind was behind this when he took their shears they cut it this way and they actually close the shears when you operate a pair of shears you don't close them down because then you get these little marks right here see them right there you get those you just want to you don't want to close them but it looks like they, he had the wrong snips going in the wrong direction anyways to me that's what it looks like it's not the first time we've seen that a lot I've, I've run into a lot of guys who just have one pair of snips and they think it does everything even though companies make rights left straight field cuts offsets different degree of offsets they don't make them just because they have nothing better to do they make them because they're needed so I think this is where that little, yeah, it was. This is where that splice joint was, and uh, that's what it was. There was a, they put it over there because they couldn't make the shoulders like we do. So all they did was just cut it. There's also a fleece back, and this stuff is real thin. Even though it was a TPO, uh, you can't really weld to this. That is super thin. It really, you'd probably burn this before you get anything to weld to it. So on a commercial level, they do make heavier grade fleece backs, but. Um, you can weld to those, but they're a different animal. So. We're plugging along. Uh, so I think I didn't cover this when I uh, shut the camera off. It just came to my mind. These fleece back, it leaves these. This is a fleece. Look how wadded that up. We can't get that out. So if we roll it and put our adhesive on there, that's going to wad up. You'd see it underneath there. So even if we didn't opt to redeck this with the plywood we would have had to have gone over it with something because that would just show you'd see the lumps and it would get more clumpy so but that's another reason why we opted to do it because i knew it had a fleece back on it so. but overall the, the roof looks it looks pretty good uh, the frame does so we should be able to get the decking on 
be awesome if we can get some roofing on today too. But all of this will be glued and screwed back together. Normally you'll see we use staples, but we've got obviously an aluminum frame assembly here. So we're going to glue it down here and then we'll screw them in. On the other trusses that are wood, you keep putting the screws into those thin little trusses, then you'll end up splitting it. So on this one, it's going to get screwed in there with some um, self-tappers that'll pull it down nice and get it cinched in there. Uh, we got some decking going down. And you can see all the glue we got in there. Look at all that glue. And then we go screw her down. The other thing we did is we uh, put pilot holes in them already. Hold up a second there. Right. We want to make sure we got some glue under there. So we just put it on there and pull it back a little bit. So we got the glue under there. Push your shoulder in. Now she's going to execute the screwage. Execute the screwage. See this guy, he's got one of these fancy dancy, look at these things, magnet. See that magnet, holds all the screws. If it were me, I would have had it on the other hand, then I could use my left hand to get the screws off hey, my right. that's a good idea. That's right, I'm smarter than the average bear. That's why I make the big bucks, 262 a week, my man. You want to see that kind of money, you better bring your A-game. You always want to start in the center. You start in the center, then the, you don't have any. If you started here and it was a little ripple, and you screw it down, then you have a little home. So any homes, what's the matter? You you can go. We'll let you go. All right. So what we got here is this was the back end that had some rot, and the same on the other side. The insulation is that wet at all? Nope. The uh, well, we got a little bit of moisture here, so we're gonna check it out. And then we're going to get blowers on here, but you can see the discoloration in there. Once we dry it, we're going to hit it with some mold kill. But we're getting ready to do that right now. So, while they're screwing off over there. They're screwing off. Get it screwing off. They're screwing the deck. Boom, boom. Then the other thing we checked was right here. See the ductwork? We pulled up all the insulation and made sure that the ductwork was okay and that it didn't need to be taped. So everything seems pretty good. That's one of the other things we were looking for. I hate to put this all together and then find out, oh, we had a broken, a broken piece that we could have fixed. That's the splice, but it's real tight right there. So we check the other ones up here as well, all the way up the other end of the roof. That's what we're looking for. And you know, no sense of putting it together and then find out, well, we could have fixed it while we had it open. So it doesn't make sense. So these are the extras that you get with RV roof install. Alright, so what we did is had uh, this dry out, now we just resprayed it again, that's why it looks kind of glossy. Resprayed it with some mold kill. Then we're going to get down here and let's see what we got going on. Oh, that's what we got going on. I guess they decided they didn't want to put that one in. <laughs> well, they cut this piece real short. Be. Yep. We get a. Is the other one the same way? And the inside here? Now, that one is this one. This one, it's a floater. We gotta get that mounted in there. So, they must have figured that one didn't need to go in. Now, there is a screw in there. Oh, yeah, there is one. There you can see it. I'm trying to turn the camera so you can see it. It's in there. All right, it's either stripped out or right it's not long enough so you may be able to uh let's take this shoulder off right here the shoulder take it off and then refasten it in there make sure it's glued and screwed that's the way we do it here glue and screw and what we're doing and we also ran some wires down on the other side over here for a camera that's that black wire right there, that little squirrely one right here. So we ran that, this is for the camera. We're just gonna leave it out here somewhere or get it tucked in here. So then the 
the owner can figure out where exactly he wants to put the camera and where he wants to drill that hole to pull it through. Well, we don't know. Well, that's that, and we got the same. He's going to fix that other side. So that's where we are so far. Got a fan to dry the rest of this out. All right, so getting back to this cameo, we have got that side of the roof already glued. So you can see we've got the whole shoulder, everything else is put back. These are our protective strips that we have in here. And then uh, we even went a step further and kind of dobbed a little booger. Those were the screws went over there. I wanted to make sure they were nice, sat nice and smooth. So now we're just getting some adhesive on there. And we are ready to rock and roll. So that's about us. Then we're going to be putting in a, a new air conditioner right here. That's going to happen. It is. We're going to make it happen. So we do here. We make stuff happen. All right. That's our update. All right. So we just rolled out this other side. And now what we're going to do, if we get looking nice, it already looks nice and pretty. Now what we're going to do is roll her out. This is our balance roller, kind of like a pre-stick. Then once we get that, we'll go back over it with that big heavy roller, the big red one, and that'll hold it down. But this just kind of gets it like what we call pre-stuck. Now we're just going over it with the big one, the big roller. We just take our shoes off because we don't leave marks on the roof. It's just something else for us to have to clean. These are white, but everybody else, like this wouldn't scuff up if your shoe hit it. It wouldn't hit it too bad. You can see a little bit there, but, you know, some of the black soles, they'd leave a skid mark on there. And then we'd have to wash it all out. So that's why we just take our shoes off. We need to get that down real tight. It looks like laying down pretty well. This one, like some of the other ones, the front of this, even though it slopes down, it doesn't have nearly the aggressive slope as like the hideouts we did. If you look at the hideouts, those ones really shaped down when they came off the roof. They shaped down to the front quite a bit. They do them in two pieces uh, because it'll leave. You, we're going to end up with a fish mouth up here, right up this way. You can see it sticking out right here. And on the what was that one we just finished? I think it was, oh, on the cameo, this one here, this is the problem that they have. What they did is they cut it and they put those bands on there, if you remember that. They put those bands on. So what we're going to do is we'll take this, and then what I do is I tighten it up really good, and then I heat weld it all together, and then I fold it and heat weld it again so it looks nice and clean. And it's never cut. So it's, but, uh, it's coming together. It's coming together. Cameo update. So, we are now welding our logo down. RVRoofInstall.com, rated R. On the 17, home with no parent or legal guardian. That's right. So, we've got everything mounted so far. Got this antenna to weld in. All the curves have been welded. To we'll kind of give you an overview of what we got going on. That's going to be a Wi-Fi right there. So, we got all that in there. And so far, so good. That's where we're at. Groovy. Look how delicate he goes. I'm just trying to sneak up on the old thermoplastic and give it a little heat and licking. That's what he's trying to do. Right toe, right toe. You're standing on my right toe. Okay, this is the the turn bar. Runs all the way down. This is a different type of screw cap cover. This one snaps over this track. It's a gutter, but it snaps over. So in order for the caulking to stick, you have to have a primer, because if you prime this, like we did, you can see some primer up on there, but it's not going to stick to this. So then what we got to do, nice and easy, take this nice little artist brush, and I got to go along here, and I got to get some on the top. See if I can keep the camera going there with it. Then once I get that on there, the other problem, 
if you look real close, see, there's some on that. And then I have to take some denatured alcohol. And I gotta try and wipe that off. Because if not, you're gonna see this yellow jaundice on this. So these are some of the little stuff that we do to make sure these coaches pull together and they look well. So as you're looking up at it, you're not seeing all that booger slobbered all over there. You don't want all that. So I gotta just get that little remnant off. Hey. A little more. I only want it right there on that top ledge. That's all I wanted. So I'll have to clean all this down, do it again, wash that down, and then we can start applying the caulking on it to get it sealed. But you can see we've already got it behind there. You can see some behind there, see? And but again you need it to stick to this end this so you can't do that if it's if this isn't primed, it's not gonna stick. So it'll still have an issue. So it's kind of tedious, but that's what we're working on. I go around the whole coach and make sure anywhere where this is is going to get primer. Any uh, that's that's a piece of rubber there, but uh, this one we don't necessarily have to worry about getting on here on this one because this is metal, so we can we don't necessarily have to prime that, but we do have to prime this. Don't have to prime the fiberglass, but we do have to prime this. So that's a. Uh, a little bit to do we still got the other side to do so it's kind of like I said time consuming these are the little things that matter whether your coach is going to leak or not if you don't seal that up you may have a leak and you say hey I got a leak well, this could be coming from this you know whoever else did it but not from us because that's why we're doing it <laughs> okay so you can see we get that primer all in there you can see it looks kind of goldish that's what that is so now what we're going to do is we're going to apply a thin layer of caulk in there it's gonna be real thin and what we're trying to do is just get it right down in that actual crevice that's the first shot and then we're gonna come back and hit it with a second lick afterwards all right there's our roof we are done our cameo is ready for the prom all right why are we missing a light the reason we're missing a light this is a camera and I don't know where this fellow wants to put the camera so we just pulled it out here I don't know if he wants it down here a little lower over this way which way up here so we just left it that way for him. He's going to mount that, but at least the wire's there for him. That's why we did that. So everything else is all set. We've got our boots welded in here. We've got, uh, you can see we've got the antenna. Now we made this, let me sneak by you there, gents. Oh, we made this antenna right here, this base. And if you look, it kind of angles, because this has got to sit pretty level. So we designed this one up so it will be able to, uh, maintain level because the, the coach kind of slips down so this was the original spot where the antenna was so we just put an auxiliary little mark on there because if that was up there the air conditioners in the way and they said it's got to go over there and so we just put that hole we uh, patched that hole with that just so it looks clean we got our curbs all on our air conditioner everything's all welded everything is absolutely all welded we even have our uh, front counter flashing piece so when the water rolls down this way it's going to go underneath and what it is is it's got counter flashing just like this so when the water tries to if you get caught in a heavy storm and that water is just really pouring across here it's going to hit up in here it's going to travel out you know it can't get up and jump around you'll still have water obviously coming down but you won't have any driving water trying to jump up over it on the air conditioners the bigger concern that I have is up underneath there is a foam gasket see that foam gasket so I don't want any water to run around the cover and these air conditioners they always sit closer forward to the curb box or the opening of the box than they do to the rear you can see how much overhang we have here and again all that's been all heat welded in there you don't have to put caulking on this all you have to do is just wash this down but also up underneath here the the bottom is kind of corrugated a little bit so any water that does trickle down this way will hit that and roll out it's not going to get traveled back in there if that was the case we'd put another piece on there so we got this front counter flash on this one we got the same there's another one up there that was newly installed right there we didn't do it another company has done that and we've also got our stands on here just to give it some balance that's all it does we have one on each side we fabricate all those two a lot of folks ask us about these curbs these curbs are proprietary to RV roof install we do not sell them uh, we don't make them for anybody else we these are these are ours so you can see we got the same Deal going on here with the counter flash right up on here same thing every one of them have that detail on them every one of them even though you know this skylight's got the same thing we've got the boots we'll walk around the other side 
And then on the other shoulder, you know, if you remember, they had that piece in there. So what we did is we took this and we took it and hemmed it. And then we heat welded it back. But we've got the same going back to the air conditioner. This is just a different style of an air conditioner. That one's a different model. So this one has just a different style. And that's what we do. We fabricate every piece to fit properly for whatever we're working with. It's not just one piece fits all. So we've gone around all of our termination areas right here. Then on the opposite side of that, on the other side here as well, all of this has been sealed twice. It's sealed twice because if you've ever run a tube of caulking, you start squeezing it and you'll hear it pop a crackle. And when you do, you just buried an air pocket. So we want to make sure that we do not have uh, any air pockets that may breach while the coach is in travel. So my best thought is how about if we put two strikes on because you put two strikes on, you've got one on top of the other. I doubt you're going to have one air pocket fall upon another one. So again, we get all two strikes down here. Everything is primed. We try to clean it and do the, wherever the caulking's going, that's where we want the primer, but you can probably see just a little residue of it, that little gold. That's what it is. So all this has been done. Here's a little bit right here. We try to get the best we can, keep as close as we can so it's not obvious. And uh, we'll go around, take a walk around the other side. So these boots, when you walk up on these boots, they're going to be nice and tight. They're not going to break like the other joints do and the other caulking seals do. This is all heat welded and that's poured in there. So the base is right here is uh, the same that's in here, buried down here. So we've got an inch of pourable on top of that, which is just a little different of a product. It's, uh, I guess you'd kind of liken it on a self-leveling. You can see how we got the stands on here. And then we also had this uh, Wi-Fi that we put in. We just dropped it down on the cabinet. You know, we accommodate stuff like that, but we don't really get into too much wiring here. And uh, you got these plumbing bell caps on here. If these caps come off, if they pop off, this is still sealed up underneath here. So even if that popped off, it would just go down into the holding tank. So that'll get you there. And the same thing, if you remember, they had that piece that went on there. All we do is hem it and fold it and flip it back. A little bit more um, primer right about here. So we we'll probably doll that up just a bit. And then what we also did is we went around like this light. We went around here down a bit. Went around this light. This is already sealed here. But we went around the awning rail. We went around all of that. And then we went around the same on the other side. So we just want to make sure anything here, so someone doesn't say, hey, I got a leak. It, it just can't possibly be coming from us. <laughs> and if you have a leak, it's generally coming from, you know, a window. It's going to be coming from somewhere else because we just take so much time to do it. We don't want anybody to do these twice. That's for sure. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, the material. First off, this is our logo right here. You can see that RVRoofInstall.com. You can go to the website. And you can look up all the information. There's a products page as well that explains it. But we also put the month and we put the year on here. So then we know when this coach is coming back how old it is while we're doing the inspections. If you ever go to sell it, then I don't want someone to climb up on this roof and say, hey, I gotta talk you down, I gotta put a roof on these things, they all leak. You go, oh, wait a minute, this thing's only a few years old. Because yeah, we do a transferable warranty here, and then if we do transfer it, uh, the person who buys it just comes in for their inspections as well. So that's, that's our logo right there. And here's the product, it's a 60 mil GAF Evergard is what it's called. It's a TPO product. That's what this is. And you can see up here, you can probably see some of these little whiskers right in there. See if I get a little better lighting there. But there's some little whiskers right in there. And let's see if I put it against something darker. <laughs> so you can see, there you go, you can see them there. So those little whiskers, that's the reinforcement that's inside here. And it helps to, for impacts of tree branches, hail, things like that. This is a commercial membrane. It's the same exact material that you'll find on a hotel, you'll find it on an office building, a library, a restaurant. So if you want one of these samples, just give us a call. Here's our number, 423-475-7663, and we'll get one of these out to you. Now this is, we have, obviously this is white, and then we offer gray, and we offer the sand or tan, and those all have the same Energy Star rating to them. So they're the same thing, same exact, it's just those three colors there. So, but, uh, that's, a, that's our cameo all wrapped up, finally ready for the prom. Like I said, you can see how we even put a strike along there as well. Just a courtesy, because we're really already right here, so it's no big deal when we're here. You just walk back there and give it another swipe in with the caulking gun. So, but um, 
you can get find if you're on our YouTube channel, like I said, you can go to our website as well and you can look up some information on there. Again, give us a call if you have any questions. We appreciate you watching and uh, you, we'll see you on the next one. We've got a few more to post for sure. We stay real busy over on this side. Thanks.